Sue Braden from the Hedberg Public Library. Today we're here at JATV Studios with Jake Sailing, our cameraman, for another edition of Parker Penn Memories. Uh, this is a project where we've invited uh, former Parker Penn employees and friends of Parker to uh, visit with us and share their memories of why Parker Penn is important to them. Today we're with Jackie Wood, who brings a unique perspective. Jackie's father, was employed at Parker Penn. Jackie's a Janesville native and also a local businesswoman. Uh, she recently hosted a, an exhibit of the Parker Penn 125th anniversary at the Old Town Mall uh, in downtown Janesville. And that was sponsored, uh, put on by the Rock County Historical Society. And Jackie hosted the exhibit at her building and we're very happy to have her with us here today. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning. Good morning, Sue. Happy to be here. Thanks for being here. Jackie, uh, you're going to visit with us and explain about your, your dad and, uh, and his work at Parker and some other cool things. So I'm going to let you go ahead and, and tell us about uh, who your dad was, what his name was, and when he worked at Parker, and, and what was his involvement. Well, he um, his name was Arthur F. Perry. and. Um, what I always thought was rather neat about it is that he and my mother um, were all Janesville natives, met in high school, and both of them went to Parker Penn right after graduation, so they must have been 18, maybe 19 years old. And what was your mom's name? Um, Regina name? Perry. Okay. And um, she, she, my mother worked in the office until I was born, and then she never worked again. So, um, but it was the time when you could go to Parker Penn or GM actually, mm -hmm. and and get a job right out of high school. Mm -hmm. So what I thought was always neat about my father, what he did from that time on, he did work into a pretty substantial position um, for not going to college, although I know Parker was good about training people. Mm -hmm. But it was a, a great pride for him to work there, and I thought that um, he, he really respected the company and, and had a very, we all had a very good life. Oh, that's great, and so interesting that both your parents worked there out of high school. Yeah, I thought that, that was neat. Now, um, my one thing about the uh, Parker Penn, though, they did hire family. They were known to be um, family friendly. Yep, they were family friendly. So um, his mother did work there. So that is, I'm sure, how how he got in. She was a single mother at that time, and then his sister, who was widowed. Um, with little children. She, of course, got a job there, too, so I guess most of my family did work there. Oh, that's great, Jack. But it was a good place for them, we all. Um, it really was. And what, um, uh, who did your dad work with? Who were some of the people who worked Well, with? he, I know he started out as a tool and die maker, um, and that's when, of course, the plant was on the hill, and mm -hmm. I, we lived, and I was born right over by St. Mary's Church, so he walked up and down that hill a couple blocks to work. Oh, that's so great. I always thought that was neat too. Mm -hmm. And I remember him coming home, um, I think it was around three, and at that time, and he must, I, I'm sure everyone started out at a second shift, mm -hmm. so I think it was like 10 or 11 at night, I would jump out of bed and go down, and he'd always have some candy for me, so oh. that was a nice <laughs> memory of, of Parker Penn. Yes. Um, but I know. Um, Dan Parker um, was a name that was brought up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I know um, he did go to Canada with Dan Parker at one time, mm -hmm. and um, he has um, several friends that I um, that he was friends with at Parker Penn, um, and most of them I think they started out of high school as well, mm -hmm. and they stayed fast friends. And they, um, most of them, I think, worked up into supervisory positions. Oh, that's great. So I think it was the time you could do that, of right. course. But I think Parker was good about his training. And mm -hmm. I think they stress perfection. Mm -hmm. I do. And I think that gave people pride in working there as well. Mm -hmm. Jackie, uh, you mentioned he started probably on the night shift mm -hmm. or second shift. Did he get to the day shift eventually? He did. He did. Mm -hmm. He worked up. Um, as I said, he was a tool and die maker, and then um, then he became a chief process engineer, and that was when Arrow Park was built, oh. and um, he worked up um, wherever the engineering department was, and I, that is when he went to Canada with Dan Parker, and 
after that, um, he worked as a supervisor for a short time of the metals department. Okay. So he did work up into, you know, some supervisory mm -hmm. roles. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Uh, I was curious too, how did you come about to host that inaugural, um, that exhibit for Parker Penn? Well, at their anniversary. Okay, Newell Rubbermaid called uh, Michael Reuter, mm -hmm. our Rock director Historical of the Rock Society. County Historical Society, and asked if they would create an exhibit and put on an event. They helped to fund it, um, and we had other sponsors as well, But because um, it was a big undertaking. Mm -hmm. We had over 125 people, and the purpose of it was to celebrate the 125 years of Parker Penn, mm -hmm. but to also get the Parker employees together. Um, the former employees and they came and they loved mm -hmm. it and as you know the exhibit is so fantastic and that was created by our archivist and by the staff at our Rock County Historical Society and it's very extensive as you know. Well we're so fortunate too to have such an organization here and, mm -hmm. and your support is very much appreciated and now the exhibit has moved over to uh, BMO Harris Bank um, yes, it has North Main till, Street till next November. Um, oh, I guess how I, how I got involved is I was president of the board when they called. President of the board. <laughs> the board of the, the Rock County Historical, Historical Society mm -hmm. when Newell Rubbermaid called, and so that and then I had the building and Michael Reuter, the executive director, said, "Well, why don't we have it accessible to the public? Mm -hmm. We'll put up the exhibit, we'll have the event, but then this will be accessible to the public." So it is. Uh, it was a year, a little over a year at Old Town, and now it is at um, BMO Harris Bank. Oh, that's just wonderful. And uh, uh, I, I attended the opening at when it was at Old Town Mall, and I was so impressed with the number of people there mm -hmm. and of all different eras having worked at Parker Penn, and, uh, and the response was just tremendous. It was, it was, it was a fun night. And, and one thing that really impressed me was the people that came from Newell Rubbermaid. They had about six of their executives there, as well as Chef Parker. He's mm -hmm. always been great to, to attend these things. He's the one, I think, keeping really the, the heritage of Parker Penn alive. Yes. And, but the Newell Rubbermaid people um, made the point of letting us know that they were gonna keep Parker um, in a very, you know, its reputation and um, its memory in a very high place in their company. They formed a special place that's just um, for Parker Penn within their company and they're just certain people that do work in that area and I thought that was really great because the other companies that bought them just kind of shuffled them in with everything else. Mm -hmm. So now there is, um, I guess you call a division of Newell Rubbermaid that is strictly Parker Pan. Oh, that's and great. And it's going, I mean, worldwide, they are manufactured in France, as you mm -hmm. know, and um, with the archives, as you also know, still in England, but the sales overseas are, are phenomenal, really. So it's a very vital company still. That's great, and, and it's nice that they uh, keep that heritage alive and acknowledge where Parker mm -hmm, started. Mm -hmm. um, why, why do you think people are so passionate about Parker Penn? Well, I, I tried to think and think about that. Anna Relux asked that question when she did her article, too. She said, why did this mean so much? Because I will say when we had the, the party, the celebration for the 125th anniversary, I everyone I talked to of the former employees, they all said, "We're we're a family. We're a family." Mm -hmm. And then when it did finally close, it was almost like a death to them mm -hmm. in their family. So I thought that was pretty powerful, um, and says a lot for the company. But I think it offered a good good lifestyle. Um, your family members always got hired, as well mm -hmm. as you knew your college students could have summer work, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, people stayed close outside of work as well, because my father's um, friends, and really our family's social friends, were the other Parker Penn employees mm -hmm. that he worked with. Um, we went to each other's birthday parties, and the men hunted and fished together, and seemed just like a really um, a good, you know, bunch of people that just mm -hmm. loved working together and also loved recreating together. There was also the Parker 51 Club, oh, um, which um, was up, well, it's where they built the um, one of the city buildings now. It's just up from Arrow Park. It was okay. up from Arrow Park, kind mm -hmm. of in a wooded area. 
and it, it was just for men. You could do that in that time, just have mm -hmm. men's clubs. So that was kind of a social um, place where the employees could socialize as well. But um, I think in the beginning, I took this off of the exhibit. Um, I think George the first went out of his way to provide clubs and activities for mm -hmm. the employees. And I want to read this off because it just tickled me, all the things they had. Um, well, number one, the Parker Penn Band, that was very popular. And that was so much supported by the company. Yes. They all worked there, but they got this band together. And I know that Parker Penn in the beginning bought all the instruments oh, for wow. the employee, or the people that were in the band. And I, they got to be so popular when they hired someone, they made sure it might be somebody that played an instrument, oh, too. Wow. <laughs> I read that somewhere. Something needed at the time. But anyway, they had the band, and that was out there playing all over the place. Um, they also offered, for the employees, um, these activities. Bowling, golf, softball, tennis, trap shooting, volleyball, basketball, touch football, a kazoo band, and a CB radio club. And also, um, George um, Sanford Parker, he, it also said he put on many picnics and parties and really mm -hmm. fraternized with the employees. I know their newsletter over the years was very revered and very well done. So there was mm -hmm. a lot of attention paid to that and that the employees were all always informed. Um, I think that helped keeping them, you know, like a family. They also, the Penettes was another, you know, yes. thing that really, um, you know, they gave tours and made sure the public coming in yes. had a great um, view of everything. And I was always impressed that they paid a full-time archivist. They were interested in saving their history mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that the name Parker Penn garners a great deal of respect. And the mm -hmm. arrow on the pen, you're proud to have that arrow on your pen. And people were proud to show the pen, you know, mm -hmm. in their pocket. Mm -hmm. So I think that sense of pride made people mm -hmm. stay um, and feel like it was a family. And they stress quality and lifetime guarantee. That's They did. That's <laughs> phenomenal. It is mm -hmm. phenomenal. But they had good working ind conditions. There was quality in the facility. Um, it was a very clean place to mm -hmm. work. And when they built Arrow Park, I remember that was quite state of the art. Um, I know they put in a very expensive heating and air conditioning thing that was making it, you know, would make it more comfortable for people to work mm -hmm. and things. So mm -hmm. they paid attention, I think, to the employees, and the employees in turn, you know, it became their life, really. Jackie, uh, that's interesting. You mentioned that about the facility. We did some, uh, we did a tour over at One Parker Place mm -hmm. last month. And prior to that, we did some, uh, reviewed the history of that building, which opened, uh, I believe they started building it in 1919. I think it opened around 1920 mm -hmm. on Court Street. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, we found an article in the James Gazette that uh, over 2,000 people toured that building when it was new back in yes, the 1920s. Yeah. And, it's, wow. um, and it talked about the modern restrooms and, and uh, lounge area for the employees and how important mm -hmm. that was. Mm -hmm. And they were sure to build that into the facility mm -hmm. even back then. So mm -hmm. um, um, that would have been fun to be at Arrow Park when it first <laughs> I think opened. so. I don't, I don't know where all they did all that activities. I don't think it was out at the plant, but people, I had a great camaraderie, I think. Mm -hmm. Now you've got some other notes there, Jackie. What else would you like to share? <laughs> Um, I, um, I guess maybe just a couple memories that I had as a child um, oh, or growing great. up with it. Uh, yeah. um, the one was, um, well, I said my father coming home. He used, he is, I always had the feeling that he had a great deal of pride in the plant as well. Um, he would take us, you know, like you could go in on a Saturday, you know, mm -hmm. when no one was there and it was, he always took great pride in showing us around, and I was always so impressed by these huge barrels of plastic pellets. Oh. I mean, they made their own barrels. I know they had their own um, metal department, mm -hmm. so they did their own barrel, or the, um, the caps and such. And it was just kind of fascinating to see mm -hmm. all these, these things behind the scene. 
Um, I remember sitting on a chair at the opening of Arrow Park with all and listening to all the speeches and oh. and the flags were so impressive and they still are. In fact, mm -hmm. the flags are still up at um, Old Town Mall. Oh, they are hanging Good. around the the front um, right. Main Street area there, and we're going to be putting up an explanation of each of the countries because what they did they had a flag from every com country and a stone beneath it, mm -hmm. indicative of that country. Um, so um, there was a great deal of um, pride in all that as well. Yes. One thing I did as a child, though, my father often, and I think a lot of the employees had, um, or the executives had, um, they tested the pens. And I believe oh. it was the Parker 51. So he brought that home, you know, and showed us, well, this is a new prototype of this pen. Oh. And I took it to school in fourth grade, and that was a no-no. Oh, dear. And, one, <laughs> and what was really <laughs> stupid about that as well, <laughs> number one, you shouldn't do it, but one of my classmates was Terry Hall, and his dad was Phil Hall. Oh, <laughs> dear. <laughs> so, so my father, of course, back. found out. Mm -hmm. So I, <laughs> I don't remember anything. Oh, Big dear. ramification, but I knew never to do it again. Right. Oh, Jackie. Well, thanks for sharing oh, that one. Golly. Now, you brought um, a desk set. Was that your father's desk Well, set? his name is on it. I guess they would have given it to him. I know they, at some point, mm -hmm. with a plaque with your name on it. This is a little pamphlet from the 125th anniversary that was at Parker Penn. Yes. And these, of course, were handed out to everyone. Yes. And, um it added to um, the whole, I think, evening was very, very well done. It was very well done. In fact, that's the night we met Genevieve Joyce. That's right. And she was there with her great niece, Jamie Swenson, who uh, works here at the library. And so as I was greeting Jamie, she introduced me to her aunt. And uh, we were so impressed with her mm -hmm. uh, spunk and, and knowledge and, and memories. and. Uh, she was the very first person we visited with about their Parker memories, and so that. Uh, so I think between your exhibit and Jen, mm -hmm. Jen Joyce, mm -hmm. that's what helped mm -hmm. get the ball rolling mm -hmm. with our, our project here. Uh, Jackie, I'm curious. Do you have a favorite Parker pen? Well, <laughs> or a couple I'm, of favorites. Well, I, I'm in the. <laughs> they asked us that and filmed it for the interactive exhibit, oh. which is also part of the. Um, the exhibit. You push a, it's like a little computer thing and you push a mm -hmm. thing and it's got some neat things on it. It shows you how to take a pen apart or shows the inside of a pen. Anyway, they asked some of us to come and say, what is our favorite pen? Well, I picked the dual fold mm -hmm. because, and what I said in that was because it, I, I, I could do two things at once if I had that pen because dual means two. Oh. <laughs> So that's why I picked it as my favorite, but truthfully, I like how it looks. The, the colors they had mm -hmm. for that pen are fabulous. Mm -hmm. I think there's seven different colors, mm -hmm. and it shows there again, it shows it in the exhibit. One of the colors is a very bright yellow, and mm -hmm. that was taken from a vase that uh, George Parker brought back from a travel abroad. Yes, and I think it was called Mandarin Yellow. Yes, it mm -hmm. was. And there was a lovely poster, too, in their advertising. There is. Yes. It's beautiful. Yes. And it shows, I think, the little vase mm -hmm. in it. So I, I like it for the color and the, the beauty of mm -hmm. it. We had a, a cute story, and if I've already mentioned this in one of the other the tapes, but I work at the Part of my work at the library involves uh, working at the information desk and helping people uh, with their questions. And a woman came up to the desk and she was new to Janesville and she wanted to register to vote, which you can do here at the library. And uh, we gave her the form and mm -hmm. she pulled out this lovely Parker Jotter pen. And mm -hmm. the uh, top half was the brushed silver, I think, and the bottom half was kind of a powdery pink. And I complimented her on the pen, and she's, and she had a bit of a, a southern accent. She said, "Well, you know, I just moved here. This is my favorite pen. I've had it all my practically all my life, and I didn't know till after I moved to Janesville that this is where Parker pens were born." Wow! And so she said, "This makes it extra special for me." Oh, so. wonderful, wonderful. But uh, well, Jackie, are there other memories or things you'd like to share or say? Well, I think I probably gotten most everything out. I um, 
I did want, I guess, to say that I'm very, um, or feel how important it is for all of us to make sure that the history of Parker Penn is known. Mm -hmm. um, because Parker Penn will be known around the world, they're still making them. Mm -hmm. But they must always know that it was founded here in the mm -hmm. basic root of how George Parker, you know, got the idea for a pen, perfected a pen, figured out how to manufacture it, and then grew, it grew from there. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a very important thing. So if we can keep that alive, that it was founded here, I think it's very, very important. So that's why I'm so tickled to, I guess, have any memorabilia or anything that I can get my hands on now. Mm -hmm. And, and to have these exhibits here at the library as well as at the Historical Society, who eventually um, will have a Parker Pen room. Oh, that too. sounds great. That sounds great. Well, Jackie, thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Um, uh, we're looking forward to uh, when this initial project is wrapped up. We'd like to have an opportunity to uh, invite all the people who've shared their memories mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. uh, or somewhere we'll get together and we'll have a viewing party to view um, to view all these histories together and, and so we'll keep you in touch with that. Thank as you well. and you are doing so much for um, Parker Penn and its history so I thank you for that. Well you're welcome we're very fortunate here the library and the library board and the uh, friends of the library uh, support the project and yes. the effort. Yep and we should it, it's a, a pride for all of us I think to, to have had that history. Yes I agree. Well thank you. Thank Jackie. you very much. You're welcome.